Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. This is a special episode of Pulp Crazy, as it's being released on December 7th, 2015, which would be Pulp Writer Lee Brackett's 100th birthday. Besides writing for the Pulps, Brackett also penned screenplays, including an early draft of The Empire Strikes Back. She also wrote Western screenplays for director Howard Hawks. If her name seems familiar, um, you might be thinking of Halloween, uh, John Carpenter's Halloween, where the sheriff in that was named Lee Brackett. I'm pretty sure that was an homage to the pulp writer. Now, in celebration of Lee Brackett's birthday, I'll be discussing a short story set in her Venus cycle. It's called Terror Out of Space. It first appeared in the summer 1944 issue of Planet Stories. Terror Out of Space is a combination of science fiction and cosmic horror set, for the most part, below the seas of Venus. The main character is Lundy, a space cop of the Tri-World Police Special Branch. He's charged with tracking down and returning a dangerous organism to the scientists back at headquarters. This organism is one of a number of its kind that came to Venus after the planet passed through some space mist. The creature is only referred to as it or she. It induces madness in men, including Lundy's partner, Jackie Smith, who's a native of Mercury, and also a man named Farrell. Farrell was in possession of the creature. He's the man they were assigned to track down. Farrell was a normal guy with a wife and kids before it corrupted him. The creature is invisible to anyone who isn't under its influence, but to those under its influence, it appears as a beautiful little woman. Even though it or she is invisible, Lundy states it felt cylindrical when he initially captured it and covered it up. Even though it is invisible, The creature can be captured if someone watches the eyes of those under its influence. The story opens in the skies above Venus, but quickly changes to beneath the ocean due to the perpetrator, Farrell, getting free from his restraints. Jackie Smith, Lundy's partner, also becomes corrupted too. The ship crashes into the ocean, and the entity gets free. Both Smith and Farrell are killed in the crash, leaving only Lundy to recapture the creature underwater. He dons a suit that allows him to leave the ship and walk on the ocean floor, then begins trying to locate it. On his hunt, he comes across an aggressive form of aquatic flowers that attempt to grab him, as well as an undersea race of plant-like humanoids. At first, he only encounters the females of the race, as their men have been corrupted by it, and they need Lundy's assistance in getting them back. Now, overall, this is a pretty solid story, but I wouldn't say it's outstanding, but it definitely has some positive aspects to it. First of all, combining science fiction with cosmic horror alone is something I find pretty interesting. Uh, This is basically a cosmic horror story set on Venus, um, on its ocean, or below its ocean in particular. I also like the character of Lundy. Physically, he's a bit of an unusual pulp hero. He's not a big, towering man. He's more like a scrapper. This was the first Lee Brackett story I've read, and while it didn't completely blow me away, I'm definitely interested in reading more of her fiction. Morgan Holmes has been blogging about her Eric John Stark series of stories on his Sword and Sorcery blog, so I'll probably start with those. 
Morgan's blog postings are what made me aware of Brackett's birthday coming up. And like all of his sword and sorcery articles, his Eric John Stark articles are well worth reading. Paizo Publishing put out some of Brackett's Stark novels through their Planet Stories imprint at affordable prices. And I have all of those sitting on my bookshelf just waiting to be read. So expect some pulp crazy episodes on them in the near future. Hafner Press also publishes high-end collections of Brackett's work. They actually have a Lee Brackett Centennial book that's up for pre-order now on their website. If you're interested in learning more about Lee Brackett, check the show notes. I'll include links to her Wikipedia page, ISFDB page, and Morgan's blog postings about her Eric John Stark character. I'll also link to Paizo's website and Hafner Press's website. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at Pulp Crazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is located at youtube.com slash pulpcrazy. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.